Hey, this is a multi-part series and I have linked part number one in the video description down below. Oh, and if you want to follow along, you go to procurementzen.com slash digital where you can download the resources, chat with fellow students. And by the way, it's completely free. So let's start with video. If I could give you only one tip on how to best use Nime, it would be to name your notes. And in this lesson, we're going to cover why. Alright, so why should you name your notes? As we have already discussed in the last lesson, Nime workflows tend to grow pretty fast. You may remember what a certain note does when you have worked on it yesterday, but are you sure you remember it if you work on it four weeks from now with the long break in between? Naming your notes is crucial because this one mini step saves you enormous amounts of time afterwards. Instead of going into the configuration of that specific group by node, we can see what it does from the label already, so from the outside, so to say. Let's quickly see that in action. All right, so here's our workflow from the last session. So basically how you name or how you uh, edit the labels or add labels at all is basically selecting a note and pressing F2 on your keyboard. Now all of a sudden I'm in here and you see a nice little formatting bar I could use to adjust the text. So basically that is very important. I could write very lengthy texts here. You see it grows and grows and grows, but this is probably not what I want to do. And any hit on the enter key on my keyboard results in a line break. All right, so let's just quickly delete that. And one thing I always try to do as well is highlight somehow the key things of, um, of that specific note. For example, one thing here could be the buyer names and then with the PVO data. So I highlight that you can do that even more if you want to, you can give it a yellow highlight then you have the whole box basically highlighted. But I don't like that so much. So that's something I would like to avoid here. So we make it white again, but we see buyer names, PBO data. Same here, group vendors by PBO. One thing I also want to do, and I find this very interesting, that's also some of the new, one of the newer functions of Nime is basically you can not only make this bold, but you can give it, for example, a different color. Hey, this is a export file name. So let's just make that red. It's awesome, right? And now if I look at this workflow from an outside view without going into the configuration of these nodes, I nearly immediately see what these nodes do. And together with the workflow annotations that we have discussed in the last lesson, that's very helpful to structure your workflows. And it helped me a lot to do this, um, to get an overview, especially when there are these side projects that I'm not working on day long. One additional thing is I usually tend to abbreviate things. So some of the abbreviations that I use is DEL, DEL for delete, COL, call for column, or TBL for table. And um, that's how I, what I use basically to structure my workflows. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. In the next lesson, we conclude this chapter by once again looking in the method to get the results. And we covered some of this already, but we're going a little bit deeper. And then we conclude this module before we then start to build our next workflow together in the next chapter. See you in the next lesson. If you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with Nime. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.